Why, hello there. Welcome to Adventure OC. My name is Matthew, and I got to board one of the most luxurious cruise ships in the world, and I want you to come along with me. Her name, Queen Elizabeth a ship with a rich British heritage that courses through her illustrious interiors. The Queen Elizabeth was constructed in the Fincantieri shipyard in Monfalcone, Italia, and was christened by none other than Queen Elizabeth II herself. I name this ship Queen Elizabeth. The same queen who launched the original Queen Elizabeth in 1938 at the brink of World War II, and whom the famous hit show on Netflix, The Crown, is based off of. What sets her apart from the typical cruise ship like the Grand Princess behind me is her unmistakable British heritage. That and the fusion of Victorian and Art Deco design found all throughout her interiors, as well as all the decadent amenities that you'd expect on a luxury cruise ship. At 964 feet long, the Queen Elizabeth is 82 feet longer than her step great 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 grandmother, the RMS Titanic, and 55 feet shorter than her grandmother, the RMS Queen Mary. She holds 2,091 guests and 1,005 crew, compared to the 2,260 guest capacity on Costa Luminosa, which means a more spacious experience for guests. The Queen Elizabeth is owned by Carnival Corporation, which owns a good portion of the cruise industry, and is operated by Cunard Line which has been around since 1840. Cunard itself has a very influential and affluential history, carrying all kinds of influential people throughout its history of service. From famous authors like Charles Dickens, to famous celebrities from the golden age of Hollywood, all the way up to famous rock bands in the 60s and 70s, to where the ships themselves have become celebrities in their own right. So putting all of this together, the rich British heritage, the famous reputation, as well as the glitz and glamour aspect, and you have modern Kinnard. Currently they operate three ships, one on its way, and one of them being the last ocean liner in the world, the Queen Mary II. The difference between an ocean liner and a cruise ship being how much it can handle rough weather. Now, TBH, I thought that the Queen Elizabeth would be a typical Vista class cruise ship with a tacky veneer of elegance on the interior. And boy, how wrong I was. While the exterior isn't too crazy different from a typical Vista class cruise ship, her interior speaks volume on everything that Cunard stands for. She docked as she usually but rarely does here in Pier 93 in San Pedro, California, which is a bigger part of the Port of Los Angeles, which is about 30 to 45 minutes from the heart of Orange County, depending on traffic. Scott and Catherine of the San Pedro Visitor Center took a group of us to explore the ship on a special tour and have a very special authentic British high tea in the Britannia restaurant at the end. Long Beach and San Pedro are some of the largest big ship ports to cast off from, apart from San Diego, two to three hours down south. Cruise lines like Carnival, Princess, and NCL Norwegian Cruise Line are the primary big ship providers here to destinations like Mexico, Hawaii, Alaska, and the Panama Canal. But on occasion, luxury cruise lines like Yacht of Seaborn, Silver Seas, Crystal, Oceana, Regent Seven Seas, and indeed Cunard will grace us with their presence and make it possible to enjoy a wonderful luxury experience. With the appropriate wallet size, that is. Cunard, though, for being a luxury brand, is on the more affordable side of its competitors. The ship was in the middle of a 21-night cruise from Vancouver to Fort Lauderdale and New York, starting at $3,500 for an inside cabin, which is still a lot of money. But hear me out. Compared to eleven dollars to $30,000 starting prices from Cunard's competitors, I think we can agree that it's fairly affordable luxury. And with that, let's start our tour. This was a very special visit as the night before, on the 4th of July, Queen Elizabeth partook in a special royal rendezvous with her grandmother, the world-renowned RMS Queen Mary, complete with a fireworks show and the debut of a Cunard Heritage Museum curated by Kinnard to be presented aboard the ship the following day. 
Now when it comes to luxury, presentation is everything. And upon first entering the ship's grand lobby, I was blown away. Imagine my surprise the moment I walked into the grand lobby. Her faux wood veneer paneling, rich subdued color scheme, and many fine details and throwbacks, transforming me back into a glamorous gilded age. The literal air was fresh and pure, with a wonderful smell of scented soap and clean fresh linen. The Grand Lobby acts much like a central atrium would on a standard cruise ship, but more glamorous and more quaint, interestingly enough. Featured is a grand sweeping staircase, partially inspired by the Titanic's grand staircase, with a huge marquetry wall panel made entirely of wood veneers, paying special tribute to the original Queen Elizabeth of 1938, which helped shorten World War II by a full year during her time serving as a troop ship, according to Winston Churchill. It was crafted by Viscount David Lindley, the nephew of Queen Elizabeth II herself. Can you get any more British? and royally British at that. The very unique thing about the Queen Elizabeth, which I haven't seen anywhere, is her hybrid Victorian and Art Deco style combination, as well as the many odes to maritime history and Cunard heritage, as well as a few famous places that you would find in the United Kingdom. Next, I took a trip into the very quaint My Fair Lady styled library, which was way smaller than I expected, but featuring a charming spiral staircase and a lot of books for the size. Here we run into one of the problems people tend to have with modern Kinnard ships. And that's the size of the spaces aboard, which tend to look a little bigger in pictures. This is partially due to how many unique features that they want to include aboard these ships, as well as all the detail within each room that can tend to make the space feel a little smaller but smaller in a very quaint and charming way, I must add. We then passed through the veranda restaurant before making our way to the Queen's Room, a very large Victorian-style ballroom spanning most of the width of the ship where all kinds of elegant ballroom dances and high teas happen throughout the voyage. Design is reminiscent of her predecessor, Queen Elizabeth II, where the main gathering place hugs against the shopping center. You know, center with an RE, cause it's British, to make it easier for overflow and onlookers to also enjoy the entertainment. This shopping center is known as the Royal Palace and sells as a shopping center would a variety of souvenirs, high-end jewelry and swatches, as well as hot canard couture. The space is reminiscent of a Victorian era London street and extends a quarter of the length of the ship. The entertainment that you will find on board is reminiscent of classical jazz dance, vintage Broadway stage shows, and landmark British traditions like high tea at 4 p.m., beef wellington, and bengas and mash, and fish and chips in the Golden Lion pub, of course. The Golden Lion pub is a tradition since the Kiwi 2 of 1969, which takes a London pub and puts it out to sea. Cunard offers a very chill and very tranquil atmosphere. There is a disco on the very top of the ship known as the Yacht Club, but if you're looking for a high energy nightclub Vegas kind of atmosphere or a lot of excitable, fun filled family activities, you probably won't quite find it with Cunard. And speaking of authentic British heritage found on board, we could not possibly pass by the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II, which welcomes you into the Royal Court Theatre. It was painted exclusively for this ship. How much more traditional Royal British can you get? But it doesn't end there. The Three Deck High Royal Court Theatre is located at the very bow of the ship, like most theatres are of its class and features box court seating and a vibrant velvety blue color scheme complementing her sister ship Queen Victoria's red color palette very well. Right away I got Phantom of the Opera vibes and at any moment I thought the Phantom was going to drop the chandelier and surprise us all. Traveling to the upper decks are a variety of staterooms, including the four massive veranda Queen's Grill suites on decks 6 and 7 spanning 1,100 square feet and offering everything you could imagine in a suite. A hot tub bath, a huge private balcony, and tons of amenities and exclusives. The upper decks house the pavilion pool, 
spa, buffet, and the famous yacht club. Unlike many typical cruise ship Lido decks, this one was a trip straight back in time, modeling a 1900s English garden terrace. It was kind of like being aboard the Titanic or the Lusitania or Mauritania if they had pools. I got a chance to race up to the very British games deck where I got to catch a glimpse of the exclusive Queen's Grill Terrace, reserved for those booked in suites. One unique tradition that Cunard upholds is some degree of the class system. Now hear me out. While you have almost full access to the ship's amenities, there are a few spaces reserved for those booked in grander staterooms. This goes for the dining room you are assigned to as well. Which, when you think about it, really isn't too crazy of a concept. NCL Norwegian Cruise Line and Celebrity both have these similar features. Britannia Restaurant or Britannia Club Restaurant is the main dining room open to all, while Princess Grill guests dine in the Princess Grill Restaurant, and Queen's Grill guests get the option of dining in the Queen's Grill Restaurant directly below the funnel on Deck 11 and offering penthouse views all around. All guests on board get access to the Lido Buffet, the Golden Lion Pub, and High Tea, which happens every day at 4pm in the Queen's Room and is included in the cruise fare. There are 5 total dining rooms available and 11 total dining amenities available, including afternoon tea, as mentioned before, alfresco dining, and Godiva chocolate afternoon tea, which all have an extra charge. My quick trip up to the Queen's Grill Terrace actually got me lost from the group a little bit, which caused me to freak out a little bit, but just a little bit. I guess that's just the life of a deviant Orange County rebel like me. I don't know how I made it back to the Grand Lobby so quickly, but there I was, and there my camera battery was dead, and I forgot to bring my extra. Which means that while I was just in time for our afternoon tea, I wasn't able to film it in the highest of quality available at the time. So I managed to capture it as best I could with the broken camera phone that I had at the time. High tea aboard Kinnard ships is a practice that dates back well over a century, and the novelty of it is as special as it ever was. This particular Cunard high tea included a special Cunard English breakfast blend poured by gloved White Star servers with rich cream, sugar, and a variety of finger foods said to be handmade on board, including decadent salmon sandwiches on the finest clam clamped bread, a variety of finger sandwiches, fresh flaky biscuits and scones with plenty of the highest quality butter, strawberry jam, and honey. And what a combination. This was followed by rich and decadent pastries and cakes, all on fine gold-trimmed Cunard china. This all took place in the Britannia restaurant, the one open to all, located at the stern of the ship, and it is a sight to behold. One of my favorite spaces on board, in fact. It's two decks high with an entirely Art Deco inspired theme. It was lined with cloud-like 1930s motifs reminiscent of old Hollywood and columns nearly identical to the ones in the original first class restaurant aboard her predecessor, the Queen Mary. Something I was super jazzed about. On a typical voyage, high tea is served at four in the Queen's room and again included in your fare. But alas, time is a fickle ferret, and it was time for us to depart. And the ship, but not along with us. So there it is, mate. If ever you're inclined to save up for a luxurious cruise aboard a luxurious and heritage-filled cruise ship like the Queen Elizabeth, cruising, as you see behind me, has resumed. Hopefully, Cunard graces us with its presence again in Southern California, and hopefully I will be there in some capacity along with it. My name is Matthew. Thank you for watching till the end. Press the like button if you like this in any way. It helps me out a lot and makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. Subscribe to make me feel all warm and cozy inside as well and to support the channel and to get more out of local adventures in Orange County and Southern California. Explore locally, my friends. Again, special thanks to Scott and Catherine of the San Pedro Visitor Center for making this visit and therefore this video possible. They also put on really cool events like the one I just told you about. Also, special thanks to Pacific Coast Sleep for sponsoring this video. If you're searching for a new mattress, 
Look no further than to Pacific Coast Sleep. My mattress was over 15 years old and I knew I needed a change, but I didn't know where to go. So my family directed me to Tim Jones at Pacific Coast Sleep. Tim kindly and courteously helped me to find the right mattress for me. And what I finally decided on was the M. Lily Dreamer. 10 inches of layered smart foam for my health and comfort including a cooling knit fabric cover to maintain body temperature throughout the night, hypoallergenic ventilated bamboo memory foam that resists bacterial growth for a healthier and cleaner sleeping environment that also fights odors. Not only did Tim provide me free delivery on my new mattress, but he also took away my old mattress and box spring for free as well. Use my name, Matthew Richards, or Adventure OC to get 50% off your next order. Give him a call and tell him I sent you. I might not get 7 to 14 nights on a mattress aboard a luxury cruise ship like Queen Elizabeth, but with Pacific Coast sleep, I can certainly pretend like I am.